Chow sidestepping the wall, pops it off the end boards and back to the left side corner. Put back by Maroon to Wagner behind the net, changing direction. Coming out, bottom of the ring, centering it in front. A backhander that is knocked away by Poland, losing his stick. Maroon with a shot. Atlas get it right side ring. A shot again by Schaus, didn't quite get through. In their own zone to get it. Hendry had it knocked away. Meanwhile, we've got a little wrestling match back up against the glass. Whistle sounding, and Bodie right now is tied up with another number 20 and Blair Riley, and they're going to throw some haymakers back up against the glass. A big right hand from Riley. Bodie trying to spin Riley around and get his right arm free. There's an overhand right from Bodie that doesn't do much. They yank one another up along the far side wall and glass in the Atlas zone. Riley, a couple of overhand rights, not doing much. Attempting an uppercut is Bodie. Now Bodie goes to a left, misses, loses his balance, and goes to the ice. A decent tussle there, although it didn't look like either guy really did anything damaging to the other, involving Troy Bodie, the Atwells, and Blair Riley of Bridgeport. 6.33 remaining here on the first in a scoreless game. And we're gonna face off back down to our right in the Atwell zone. On the stick side of netfinder, Igor Bobkov. A 3.99 goals against for Bobkov at an 8.86 save percentage. So there's definitely been a struggle for the young net fighter. Wall for Casey Sezikis and back out high again. Sezikis top of the right ring goes in front of the net. Shot score as Nino Niederreier rakes it right around Bob Cobb. He does that so well he stands right at the edge of the goal mouth. They found it with a pass. He put a deke on Bob Cobb and wrapped it right around on the stick side. It is 1-0 Bridgeport at a power play goal, 13th lamplighter of the year for the fucking finger, and then he suffered an entirely different injury in practice this week. And we're told could be out a couple of more weeks. Here's Bridgeport racing ahead. They've got a two-on-one with a trailer. They feed off to the back door and a shot and a score. They've gone up 2-0. The odd man rush. And a beautiful backdoor pass across to John Pearson. He scored last night, and he has his ninth of the year here this evening. Racing on to the Atwell zone, giving it up top of the right side ring, and a shot by John Pearson into the glove, and now we've got a fight, and Kurtz and McKeever are going to go at it, and Kurtz slipping and falling before really anything happens. Kurtz gets back up, and they start going at it again. A nice punch by McKeever, catching Kurtz, who goes down. Kurtz is up. He still wants to continue the battle, and the linesman trying to yank the two guys apart. I mentioned it before, this Bridgeport team leads the AHL in major penalties. They're second in the league, only to Syracuse in total penalty minutes. And McEver certainly getting his money's worth this weekend with the tilt there with John Kurtz. Right, watch a replay, and after Kurtz went down the first time, he came up and came up swinging. Looked like he caught McDonald gets it back. Taps it down the left side flank into the Atwell zone. Gets a long pass up ahead. Off the stick of Kurtz. Picks it back up. Shoots and scores! And then gets hammered into the end wall. But Kurtz, off a beautiful long feed from the Atwell zone, puts Norfolk on the scoreboard with only 45.3 seconds remaining in the second period of action. Posing blue line went off the stick of Kurtz. Looked like he wouldn't catch it, but he was able to get back up on it. And get control, and then snap one back behind Poulin. Just before the defender, McEver, was there to catch him, and then knock him hard into the end wall. Back under the right point, can they hold in? Yes, thanks to Ty Wishard. Wishard puts it down into the corner. Wishard had his first goal of the year last night. In the third, they get a shot, deflection, score, and McDonald deflecting the Wishard shot from midair, back behind Bobkov. And Bridgeport back up by a pair once more. High slot and then one closer to the net, but the first one might have been a high stick. I'm wondering about that. Looking at it, look at, watch it. That's, that's up there, one, and then off our guy. And McDonald clearly defined by Landry, the defenseman. Puck ends up near the corner. Maroon over there battling, and he's got it. 
Maroon cuts back beyond the goal line. Boy, look at this guy, just handle yes, the puck yes. with one hand, there shoot off is. the defender with another, centers, shot, score! Devontae smith Pelly bats it home to tie the game, but Maroon did all the work. <laughs> all the work, I was gonna say, you know, it's, he just battles hard, he's a big body. I mean, what, what did that little video just say, the big three, right? I mean, Patty Maroon is all hard work on that one, second effort. Nice feed to Smith Pelly and they're able to bury that one. That's all him. So a 2 2 tie. Devontae Smith Pelly with his fourth of the year. Third up for the Apples here in a scoreless shootout. It was Emerson Edom. He's a left shot for the Apples, and here he comes. Has the puck over the blue line, gets it right back. Edom holds it forehand, deking shot, score! Emerson Edom, a forehand whisker beating Poulin to give the Apples the shootout advantage. John Landry that has the Bridgeport hopes on his shoulders. Landry's a left-hander. Here he comes on Bob Koff, a big turn. Back towards the middle, shot, score! He put it down low, and he beat Bob Koff on the last hope for Bridgeport. We go to the eighth round, and number 14, Matt Watkins for Bridgeport, a left-hander, has the pucker turn to his right over the line, back towards the middle, ready, firing, didn't get much on it, and a low save by Bob Koff. He actually kind of, I think he had a fan now, and I would almost, uh, that's a scary one. Devontae smith Pelly. Again, with another chance to win it for the Admirals here. Smith Pelly has the puck a right hander. Into the slot area. Fires and buries it! Devontae Smith Pelly is a winner, as are the Admirals in an eight round overtime shootout. That feels good. So Devontae Smith Pelly with the tying goal in the third period and then comes back and gets the overtime winner. That's a good weekend, three points. That's what you like to see. So the Admirals take three of a possible four points this weekend. They rally from a 2 0 deficit tonight to force overtime and eventually win it in an eight round overtime shootout. They win the shootout 2 1.